In this video, we're going to formally introduce constituents. So what is a constituent? A constituent is a group of words that function together as a unit. So here, I have a nice syntactic tree. You may have seen something similar in previous syntax courses or in my introduction to linguistics series, where we have the sentence, the man ate his broccoli. And we group up together words based on whether they're a constituent or not. So for instance, we have a noun phrase, the man, which is grouped together, and then we have a predicate verb phrase, ate his broccoli, which is grouped together. Inside that predicate verb phrase, we also have his broccoli functioning as a unit or a constituent. Uh, below, we'll see a nice bracketed version of the tree above. So this has the same information as the tree, but it's just written in a linear order with brackets and subscripts. Very difficult to read. I don't think you'd ever actually have to be able to parse one of these. In fact, generally we draw trees to make them easier for us to see. Uh, but this is the idea of a constituent. And if you look at a tree, you can identify the constituents in a tree by just picking up a node and seeing what comes with it. So if we pick up this NP, then we have this determiner and this noun dangling below it. So that is a constituent. If we pick up the VP, then we'll have the verb, the determiner, and the noun all picked up, so that is a constituent. If we pick up the TP, then we'll pick up all the words, so that whole sentence is a constituent. That also means that each individual word is its own constituent as well. Okay, so the question is then, well, is man eight a constituent? Is that a group of words that function together as a unit? And the answer is no, and we'll see some tests, informal tests, that tell us why it's not a constituent. But also, if you take a look at this tree structure, there's no single node you can pick up that only picks up man and eight. So there's no way to pick up just man and eight on their own. Therefore, they're not a constituent. So let's take a look at four tests that we can use to determine whether or not something is a constituent. Okay, the first constituency test is the replacement test. And that says that you can replace a constituent with a single word in the same category. Uh, typically, these are going to be used for noun phrases. So for instance, the old man ate his delicious broccoli. With the old man, we could replace it with the word he. So he ate his delicious broccoli. That means that the old man functions as a unit. Uh, similarly, the old man ate his delicious broccoli. We can replace his delicious broccoli with it, so the old man ate it, and therefore we know his delicious broccoli functions as a unit. Okay, we can go even further. So what about the old man? Well, let's replace old man with another word, just like dog. So we could say the dog ate his delicious broccoli. And because the old, okay, so old man is a noun phrase, it has an adjective modifying it, so we can replace it with another noun phrase, dog. So then we get the dog ate his delicious broccoli. Uh, therefore, we can tell that old man is going to function together as a unit. Uh, same with delicious broccoli. So delicious broccoli, we can say the old man ate his, and we can replace it with another noun. So the old man ate his cold fish, for instance. And because we can replace that noun phrase, delicious broccoli, with another noun, we know it's a constituent by the replacement test. Okay, so what else can we do here with this? Well, we can check ate his broccoli. Let's see if that's a constituent. So ate his delicious broccoli is a verb phrase. Therefore, if it's a constituent, we can replace it with one verb. So the old man died. Okay, because we can replace that whole thing with died, that means that ate his delicious broccoli is a constituent. Let's do something that's not a constituent. So let's do eight his delicious. So let's just take a look at eight his delicious. Can we replace that with something? The old man, well, let's use the same word. The old man died broccoli. That doesn't quite make any sense. Um, what about just his delicious? Let's just try his delicious. The old man ate, okay, so this is this weird thing that's going on because his is a determiner. Delicious is an adjective phrase, but there is no phrase that joins them together necessarily. His delicious, you need his delicious something. So we're not going to have his and delicious together as a unit. 
especially when we know that delicious and broccoli functions together as a unit, which means we can't also just split up his and delicious is to into their own thing as well, because we've already shown that no, delicious and broccoli have to go together. Okay, so that's the replacement test, and it's very useful for nouns. Uh, it can be a little more difficult to see other categories, but a great test for nouns. Okay, the second one is the sentence fragment test. This is probably one of the very first ones you learn, and the idea is that if you can answer as a sentence fragment, then whatever you answer with is probably a constituent if it's okay. So for instance, here's an example. Jeff slept in an expensive hotel. So I can ask, what did Jeff do yesterday? Well, slept in an expensive hotel. That's a good response. So I know slept in an expensive hotel is gonna be a constituent. Okay. What did Jeff do yesterday? Slept. Yeah, that's okay. Slept is okay. So we can say that slept on its own is a constituent. Okay. What did Jeff do yesterday? Slept in an. That's, that's not okay, that's incomplete. That's ungrammatical to just say slept in in. Therefore, we know slept in in isn't going to be a constituent on its own. But we can ask other questions as well. Like, uh, what did Jeff sleep in last night? And then we could say, oh, an expensive hotel, and that would be a constituent. Or, who slept in an expensive hotel yesterday? Jeff. So we can use the sentence fragment test to pick apart constituents as well. Okay, this one is a little more complicated. There's a few things going on here, but these are movement tests. So let's say we have a sentence like James ran a marathon last night. The idea is that if something is a constituent, then you can move it to the front or you can cleft it or you can pseudo cleft it. Uh, the first example is clefting. So I want to see whether a marathon is a constituent or not. So I can cleft it and I can say something like, it was a marathon that James ran last night, where I take a marathon just directly out of the sentence, and then I move it to this position. So it was blank that blank. Uh, we could also check, well, a marathon last night. It was a marathon last night that James ran. Eh, it's a little weird, but it seems to work. Or it was James that ran a marathon last night. So another thing we can do is we can check uh, constituency just by fronting. So last night, James ran a marathon. And that's where we take last night from the end of the sentence and we move it to the front. And because we confront it, we know last night is going to be a constituent. So we found that a marathon was a constituent, a marathon last night was a constituent. Um, there are some weird things, like for instance, Ran a marathon last night is a constituent, but um, we can't really front it. Ran a marathon last night, James, or it was ran a marathon last night, that James. So those constituency tests don't work for that constituent, um, but we can check it with the third test here. So here's another type of fronting. Um, we could say ran a marathon last night is what James did. But we can't say ran a marathon last is what James did night, where we replace the constituent with did and we move it up to the front. So ran a marathon last is not a constituent on its own, but ran a marathon last night seems to be just fine. Which means that this ran a marathon last night is a constituent on its own. Okay, so those are three different types of movement constituency tests that we can do. Uh, the important thing to note here is that, like I said before, ran a marathon last night, the clefting and fronting, it's not going to work for that. But uh, this final test worked, and perhaps a replacement test or perhaps a sentence fragment test would also work. These constituency tests aren't going to give the same results in all cases. You have to test a few constituency tests and check to see, well, did the majority of them predict the right solution? Are these predictions weird. Uh, there is some self-judgment you do have to make. These aren't foolproof, but they're good supporting evidence for constituents. Okay, finally, I want to introduce the do-so test. And these are for the cases where we're looking at verb phrases. So these are used with verb phrases. So these are VPs. So let's say we have a sentence like Martin quickly left the building. The idea is that you can replace this with do so if it is a constituent. 
So let's take a look at this. Martin quickly left the building and James did so at the store. So just, just the constituent you could replace with do so. But this is weird. We can't really say and James did so the store. We could say and James did so too. That would be okay. But that means that quickly left the building is the entirely is the entire constituent. So it doesn't look like quickly left as a constituent. So here's the question. What about left the building? Is that a constituent? Okay. So Martin quickly left the building and James slowly did so too. This seems a little bit better, doesn't it? Martin quickly left the building and James slowly did so too. So it looks like we can coordinate left the building and did so with our do so test. And if we leave the adverb out, everything seems to be okay. So left the building as a constituent on its own. Of course, we can also say Martin quickly left the building and James did so too. So quickly left the building as a constituent as well. Okay, so these are the different tests we can use to check to see if we have constituents. So, a small boy slowly ate his pancakes. Let's do some constituency tests to find all the constituents. Let's do the replacement test first. So for the replacement test, I'm going to take a look at the noun phrases. And we can just replace them. So a small boy slowly ate his pancakes. A small boy, we could say he. Slowly ate his pancakes. For his pancakes, we could put it. So he slowly ate it. Therefore, a small boy and his pancakes will be constituents. What about small boy? Well, we can replace small boy with just boy, because this is a noun phrase. So we could say a boy slowly ate his pancakes. So therefore, by the replacement test, we have a constituent with small boy. Okay. Um, we could ask a question. We could say, what did a small boy do? And as an answer, we could say, oh, what did the small boy do? And I could respond, slowly ate his pancakes. So therefore, we can say, yeah, slowly ate his pancakes is a constituent. Or I could ask another question. What did a small boy slowly do? And then we could respond with just ate his pancakes. So there's another constituent, ate his pancakes. Okay, I think that's all the constituents we have here. But remember, we could also do the do so test. So a small boy slowly ate his pancakes and a young girl quickly did so too. And we could see that ate his pancakes is a constituent by the do so test as well. Okay, the other important thing, of course, is that the entire sentence is also a constituent, as well as each individual word is a constituent. So hopefully now you have a rough idea of how we find constituents, what constituents are. And hopefully if you have questions or other sentences and you're confused about what are constituents, you can post them in the comments below and me or other people can help you find an answer or maybe you found another constituency test and you want to check to see if it works. So if you have any questions about that, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.